Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Meissner Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at advanced stabilization using dynamic link between Premiere Pro and After Effects. So as we all know, Warp Stabilizer is great about 2% of the time and the other 98% of the time it looks terrible. So I've got the shot here from this video I'm doing for a new company I'm starting. Check them out at kirasoul.com if you need to learn more. Shameless plug over. So now this is a pretty cool video. Um, Ariel is amazing and you you should definitely check out this video whenever I put it out because she is just like on it but anyway so here's this shot and you'll see it's not it's fine but it's not like the smoothest thing ever it could look a lot better than this so whenever I was first editing this I thought oh, I'll just throw warp stabilizer I'm like this is not a hard shot to stabilize at all you know so I was like maybe warp stabilizer can take care of that so here, here's Warp Stabilizer, even with detailed analysis turned on. Well, that looks just terrible. And that's because it is trying to stabilize Ariel and not just the background. So since Warp Stabilizer doesn't really have many options to let you say, hey, don't, don't track Ariel, which Adobe, if you're watching this, I would really like to be able to mask out an area and say, don't track this. But luckily for us, we have After Effects. So I'll disable that and I will enable this one. You will right click and go to replace with After Effects composition. And now with After Effects open, we'll go ahead and save this as something. You can see that I might have already done this, in the actual video. So I know it works, save. And here we get our composition, great. So the first thing we will do is go to our tracker. If you don't have this, you just go up to Window, Tracker, and we will go Stabilize Motion. Now this will open up our footage in our layer panel, and now we have one track point, but we want to do more than just position. We want to do rotation and scale as well, so that makes two track points for us. And another thing that we're going to want to do and turn on is just go to Options, make this track RGB because that's a little more accurate. Go to Enhance before match, which makes it a little more accurate, accurate and adapt feature in every frame just because the way this camera is moving in the light, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, so if you don't have this turned on, each little point looks for the same point in the next frame starting at the beginning. So it'll be comparing frame one to frame 100. And this way it'll compare frame one to frame two and then two to three and three to four. So if you have a little bit of, you know, like lighting changes or something, it'll handle that better. It takes a little bit more time, but you know, we got time. And luckily, this shot is super easy to track. So I'm just going to track on these pianos because look at all these great tracking markers we have. So scroll in. I'll take this guy over. And I'll set it to there because that looks pretty good. Looks like this guy didn't get moved. Nice. Ooh, I guess it wants to be a little bit bigger. That's fine. And we'll say here looks like a good track point. So there's even better. Nice. And we can shrink this down some because there's not a whole lot of movement. If we get some issues, we can always change it. And now from here, just hit track forward. And you can see since we made our points nice and small, it tracks pretty quick. And it seems to be pretty sticky on there, which is nice. So the bigger you make your track points, the more pixels it has to look at and do more, you know, computer brain power things, which makes it go slower. So if you use littler track points, you know, sometimes they won't stick as well, but when you have a track as easy as this, you can use little track points. And I say as easy as this and we'll watch, it's something that's gonna screw up, I can just feel it. Cool. So you can see that looks pretty decent, all this wild movement. So what we will do is go to apply, X and Y, that is fine. And now you can see when we replay this back, the video is completely still. So, you know, that's an interesting effect. But if you want to keep it moving, now you have basically like a still picture to Ken Burns, basically. So what I will do is I will add a new null with Control alt shift y and I will parent our video to our null. So now our video will follow whatever we animate with this null. So whenever we move it around, the video goes with it. So I will enable position with P and then hit shift and scale with S and then rotation with R. I'll keyframe all these at the beginning because we're starting off in a nice place. I'm gonna go ahead and scale up by like 112%, which is normally a pretty safe little, little bet for scales, especially this is on this is shot on the Blackmagic Cinema camera in ProRes 422, so it's got a little bit more you can stretch it. So then we'll go all the way to the end and we'll move this back to about where we want it. Whoa, not scale. Move this about to where we want it. So we'll say there and we'll rotate it. 
just a smidgen and change the position a bit more and I will sort of slowly scrub through here and make sure that our borders don't borders here don't go out and we don't get any sort of like little black splotches but it looks like we might have accidentally done a good job on the first time which is pretty nice but if you do get little uh, bits and bobs going through you can either keyframe in the middle which will sort of add another little motion or just move your keyframe at the end if you have that that space that you can do but now we just have these two keyframes in our shot looks so much better So now in order to get that back to Premiere, you just hit Control S to save. Minimize this guy, we're back in Premiere. Luckily with Premiere Pro CC 2017, Dynamic Link is like pretty decent now. I can just play this right back. So that is our smooth shot. Here is our warp stabilizer shot. And then here's our original shot. Here's all three. Still the highest mountain till I have reached the snowy peak. I would plunge to the depths of the raging seas. Build a rocket, fly to outer space to bring you back. So as you can see, with just that little bit of extra elbow grease going into After Effects and doing it, you know, the manual way, you get a lot better results. And there have been a good number of other projects where I've gotten called in like, Theo, I can't stabilize this shot. Can you figure out how to do it? And it's normally just that simple of making your own track points and then just making it work. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to give it a like, if you didn't give it a dislike, no matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Whenever I have this video of Ariel out, I'll put a link down below and you'll be able to check that out because boy, she knows her stuff. Let me tell you something. It's real good. Also check out meesnewmedia.com slash products for some video related stuff. We just released the lens junk pack, which is pretty dope. I actually use that in this video here. So, you know, little sidebar. Check out this sweet intro. Uh, I'm not done with this video yet, but you can see we get this sick little flare thing coming in at the beginning. Whoa, look how nice that is. As opposed to boring. So lens junk's cool. House LUTs, cool. Carnival Power Grades, cool. Bright Lights, cool. Curasol, cool. If you stuck around this long, check out curasol.com. Tell me what you think. It's a new thing I'm starting. It should be cool. I'll be making lots of videos for it, so you'll probably keep hearing about it. Also, be sure to share this video with your friends because, you know, there are so many videos with terrible stabilization out there. And, you know, it just makes you want to tear your little eyes out. So... Once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.